Hi everyone, in this video we will solve programs under the topic of absolute beginners in code kata using python. And now let's head to the first question. In the first question, we are given an input of an integer value and we are required to print the multiple of 9 up to the range of the given number in a single line with spaces separating each other. So first, we declare a input variable n in order to obtain the input and we declare another vital component for computation of this program that is an empty array. The reason behind declaring the empty array is that we would store the multiples of 9 in this array and print it using the print function and the asterisk in the suffix of array thus all the elements in an array would form a desired output as given in the sample output statement and we finally print the list in order to obtain the final output. In the second question, we are given an integer and we should print the sum of values up to the number itself from the range of 1. So here we will be using the same input procedure as of the previous question where we declare a as an input variable and declare an empty integer value in order to increment each of the value in the range of the given number and we would print it. So we declare a for loop as mentioned in the previous case and increment the value k with i as i would map for different values with respect to each increment which happens in for loop and finally we print the output which should pass all the test cases and now let's move to the next question in the third question we are required to get two integer values and to print the first integer value or to repeat the first integer value in each separate line as a number of times in the limit of the second value so we declare a and n as an input variable in order to obtain the two inputs and we declare a for loop the range of the second value as of to print the first value the number of times the second value would be repeated in each iteration in the for loop thus we would obtain positive results let's move on to the next question in the fourth question of the series we are required to get the input of the radius given and we should formulate it and find the length of the circumference using the formula 2 pi r where pi is represented as 3.14 or 22 divided by 7 and we have to round off the final output up to two decimal places and to, and to print the same. So we get the input under the type of float and we declare c as 2 into 22 into ra the radius we obtained. We further divided by 7 as the formula to calculate the circumference is 2 into 22 by 7 into the radius which we have obtained. Thus we declare d and complete the formula and before we print the final output we have to round off the obtained answer up to two decimal places so we use round function and now we print the final output in the first question we are required to get an input of an integer value and to print the sum of the digits of the obtained input with reference to the sample input and output we declare an value n in order to obtain the input of integer value and further we declare r is equal to 0 which is used to calculate the sum of digits in this numeric input which you have obtained and we declare a while loop under the condition if n is greater than 0 the loop iterates itself so we declare d as a reference value of the different digit starting from the first digit which is an integer value present in the last place in the sample input the numeric value equals 4 and we increment r with d in each iteration of the while loop and we use a floor division operator in order to proceed to the other digits of the numeric input value and finally we print the value of r and thus this code would pass all the test cases in the sixth question we are required to print the numbers from one to the given input one below another with reference to the given sample input and output we declare num as an integer type input variable here we declare a for loop in the range of num and reverse the order to descending order where the maximum number is referenced first by the value i. So we print the value i and it would thus output a similar pattern mentioned in the sample output. And we will move to the next question. In the seventh question, we have to input a string which is mentioned in the sample input. We have to output the same by reversing the order. So here we simply declare an input value and we use a slicing operation from the index value of minus 1. Thus the elements in the string would be reversed and we would get a similar output as mentioned in the sample output. In the ninth question we are required to get an integer value as an input and print only the even values in the range of the obtained input. So we declare an input variable num and 
Further, we declare a for loop in the range of 1 to num and we declare an if condition statement stating if variable under the range of number is even or is divisible by 2, we print it and we submit the code. Here it is non mandatory to declare an else statement as it is of no significance and now let's move on to the next question. In the 10th question, we input an integer value and print values from 1 to the number itself each separated by a new line. So we declare num as an input variable and we declare a for loop for i in 1 comma num plus 1 and we simply print the value of i which maps to all the values under phi in this sample input and output test case. The 11th question, we have to get an input of an integer value and to print the first three multiples of the particular value. To start with, we declare an input variable n and print the first number and the number multiplied by 2 and 3 in the print statement by using the comma operator which would finally print the output separated by spaces and thus this code would pass all the test cases. And now let's move to the next question. In the 12th question, we are required to calculate the simple interest and to round off up to two decimal places. And in the input, we are provided with the principal amount, interest and rate. So to begin with, we declare an input variable in order to obtain the input given. We do this by using the map and input.split function. As we know the formula to calculate the simple interest is to multiply all the given parameters and divide it by 100. We do the same by initializing a and b where in a we multiply all the parameters given and in b we divide it by 100 and thus we round the value of b to two decimal places and finally we print the output. Now let's move to the next question. In the 13th question we have to input two values and we are required to print the smaller number among those two. We could achieve the output simply by comparing the two values using if statements but yet we will use a list and we would print the minimum value of an array thus it would be easy and it is one of the effective methods to solve such questions in the long run thus we declare a variable array in order to store this input in the form of list and we print the smallest number using the inbuilt function minimum of array and thus we would pass all the given test cases and now let's move to the next question in the 14th question, we are given with an integer value. We are required to print the same separated by spaces for each digit. So we declare an input variable a. Make sure to get an input in the of the data type string or character. We use a for loop where we map the value i each digit present in the inputted string and we store it in an array. And we finally print all these elements separated by spaces using the asterisk function and the print function and thus this would pass all the test cases. Now let's move to the final question of the series. In this last question, we are given two integer values as an input and we are required to find the HCF of the given values using recursion or Euclidean algorithm. So here we declare A and B as two input variables to obtain the given input and we declare HCF as a variable which equals 1 in order to calculate the HCF for the common factors of both these variables. To determine the HCF, first we should find the highest or the smallest number present in these both given input values. In order to do so, we use an if loop statement to sort the highest and the lowest value and store it as C. And we declare an additional for loop in order to calculate the common factor between these two numbers. In the for loop, we limit the range up to the highest value that is the value of C and we declare a nested if loop stating if there is a number which divides both the given inputs we store the value to the hcf which we have declared above and we print the same and it passes all the test cases and we have completed all the programs under the topic of absolute beginners and that's it for today. And if you face any difficulties while executing the code in code cutter, please ensure that you, you check with the code available in the description. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe my channel in order to receive regular updates regarding programming related content. Thanks and we'll meet soon in another video.